good morning. We are out in the kitchen. I'm uh, frying up some potatoes, eggs, and gonna fry some ham in the uh, pan too. But I wanted to do, show you how I uh, fry up my potatoes. Uh, for many years, I thought you just put the raw potatoes in there and fry them up. Well, that's not the case because takes forever to cook and then it doesn't come out right you know it uh, it's still soft and not cooked all the way uh, the trick I just learned uh, this past year was to microwave the potatoes or cook them you boil them boil them up first to where they're kinda soft then you can put them in but I like microwaving them because that gets out most, most of the moisture <coughs> out of the potato and then fries up easier in the uh, in the pan. So let's go have a look in the pan. So these have been cooking for a little while. You can see some brownness. Hopefully, I'm not too sure with the light here, the, the hood light that we have. But, uh, I just add some... Um, vegetable oil into the pan instead of butter I seem seems to work out better so I'll cook these to where it's a nice brown on both sides I'm trying to flip that see that's too bit too much right there it's too brown and after this I'll uh, dump three eggs into it cook it and then warm up the ham and fry it up in the pan after this. So I just dumped the eggs in there. There's three of them today. Seeing they were two good sized potatoes that will fill me up. So I didn't really want my four eggs that I usually have. So I'll cook them on this one side, and all the eggs are on the top, and then I'll flip it over, because all of this will cook together. The eggs and the potatoes will cook together and combine, so it'll be one clump that I can flip over and cook on the other side. So I get both sides cooked, and then I'll... Um, cut up some cheese on top of this and I'll slice some cheese over it and I use block cheese um, block cheese is a lot cheaper uh, you know you can uh, use a knife and slice it and it comes out cheaper than um, the slices the sliced prepackaged cheese that they sell in the store I usually get my block cheese for five bucks for two pounds so imagine what that is in uh, pre prepackaged slices. A uh, prepackaged slice of craft is like three to four bucks for a pound, if that. So you get a lot more for your for your money, your bang for your buck, uh, doing it uh, with a block cheese instead. And I better flip this over before it burns on that side. It almost flipped out of the pan. But in my many years of cooking, I caught it. So that's the underside. And on top of this, I'll put some sliced cheese. And the cheese is laid up on top. And with this, I usually have ketchup, but right now I seem to be out, maybe. There's not much in the bottle. So I'll put some barbecue sauce on it. Bill Johnson's Big Apple. That's what I have. It's not as harsh as the other barbecue sauces. It's locally made here in Arizona. So that's Bill Johnson's Big Apple barbecue sauce. Maybe if I find a link or something, I'll uh, put it in the description. So the rest of it is just frying up the ham. So I have some ham in the uh, pan. 
what I do is just to brown it up on both sides just to give it uh, some heat through it and some color. My pins work, so don't mind it uh, flipping around like that. It's a cheap Walmart pin, what do you expect? So, you just want to warm up the, the uh, ham. You, know, you don't want it burning, but you want some color to it, some brownness. So it has some flavor. And uh, then it's ready to eat. So hopefully you enjoyed uh, cooking with me this morning. So to give you an update on the ham, the water that I put in the bottom of the pan helped out a lot with the moisture of it. Uh, usually it's kind of a little dry. Uh, other um, years that I've, you know, baked it, but uh, this year it's all nice. It, uh, you know, I had some earlier there when I was making my uh, potato and eggs. And it was still moist. I kept the water in the pan. I'm not too sure if the ham soaked up some of that or not, but um, uh, it helped out a lot. So if you're uh, basically, it's just reheating the ham. They've already pre-cooked it, and all you're doing is reheating the ham. But uh, if you put the water in, it helps with the moisture. Looking in the flow-through in the living room that I showed you the other day, the black stuff on top was coffee grounds. And looking at it, it looks nothing like it. Each time I go out there and take a peek, you know, you don't want to disturb the worms a lot, but you want to see what's going on with them. And they're just working that stuff like crazy. Um, so that stuff is already breaking down. They haven't really figured out there's a bunch of banana peels in there also. They're just uh, into the coffee grounds right now. The banana peels are all rolled up, you know, in the newspaper. So uh, eventually they'll work their way through the newspaper and find out there's a treat with banana peels. And hopefully the microbes have already started breaking that down, which probably would. I mean, I saw a long potworm in there, which is one of these worms that appear when there's a lot of food or moisture and it was over an inch long the biggest pot worm I, pot worm I have seen um, they're white uh, and then they disappear once there's not enough food or moisture for them to survive um, who knows where they come from and you know they just stay in the container there were mites in there you know usual stuff the isopods were still cruising around a little bit, not as much as they were a few days ago when I saw them and didn't film it, which I should have. But, uh, you know, they're still cruising on the coffee grounds, probably getting a little snack from that and the um, vegetable material that I put in from the front yard, you know, is still in there and that will break down. Um, throughout the course and you know it's gonna take a while it's not gonna happen overnight or over a month it's gonna take probably six months or more uh, that's just a guess maybe four to six months it'll take longer than uh, cardboard I've seen that because um, I've put in corn cobs last year I didn't do any this year uh, corn cobs are a worm's treat basically because they roll up over where the uh, corn kernels are and uh, slip off their cocoons so it helps them do that and then they uh, go bury themselves inside of it once it's rotten enough and they'll eat it from the inside on to the way out um, usually you find a bunch of them inside of a a corn cob maybe this next year 
I'll, I'll see about getting corn cobs if they're cheap enough and uh, put a few in there and show you it. Uh, I don't have any pictures of them. I was just thinking maybe if I did, but I don't. And I was watching the Planning and Zoning Commission of Chino Valley, out where my parents are, and they approved medical marijuana growing. Um, the guy wanted in outdoors. That's what it was. It was outdoors that he was suggesting. Um, he wasn't too knowledgeable. That's the weird thing about it. I don't know if he was in charge or what. I didn't see the whole thing. And one guy goes, well, with the dust devils that they have and, you know, things blowing around, they're worried about all these uh, seeds going all over the neighbor's yards and growing pot plants. <laughs> it was funny listening to the old people, because it's basically old people on the uh, board that they have out there. And most of these boards uh, in town, well, they've got a couple young guys uh, in Prescott here on the city council, but everyone else is uh, of the older generation. But it was just funny, some of these comments of, uh, you know, everyone's going to have a pot plant in their front yard, and um, they set up some regulations of, uh, it had to have been 500 feet away from a commercial business or a residence, I think 200 uh, in some circumstances and everything grown has to be in inside of a greenhouse now um, they didn't get into particulates of a, a carbon filter because they were worried about the smell thinking everyone's gonna get high <laughs> just you know being around a plant I don't know people should uh, learn learn more about the uh, subject instead of you know making up uh, not ideas, but uh, their own conclusions of if you stand next to a plant, you'll get high. That's what they were thinking. So, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Uh, you know, we did some cooking. That's been about it. I'm looking outside. It's daylight. Usually I don't see daylight. See, the light isn't on there's a light. See, it's not on. This is daylight. Usually you don't see daylight. Usually I don't see daylight. I always have the curtain, you know, the curtain closed because of the cold. It's still in the 30s. And it's uh, 10 o'clock. So another cold day, but, you know, that's how it goes. So, if you're new, thanks uh, for subscribing. I saw one uh, new person uh, subscribe. But, as always, they're hidden, so we can't give you a shout-out or put, put a link down in the, below. Um, what else was I going to say? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. If you're new, subscribe. If you want to do a Hangout, join the Google uh, Plus page, and I'll add you to the uh, Hangout group that I in my circle there. I made a new uh, uh, Google Hangout circle. So when I do a, a Hangout, I can just uh, have access to all the people who want to be in there and click your name and don't have to go search around for them. So thanks for watching.